Yeah, we're back. We've got plays. We're looking at plays. How many? How many plays? Come on. Five. Stick around. Greetings. Welcome back to Five Play Friday. We look at plays. We get better as basketball officials. Let's get started without delay with play number one. A you make the call play. What do we have on this play? And it looks like for Arkadelphia, uh, number five, Max Halek's entry. And we are just about ready to get underway. Jump. Control by. Well, I guess it would look like it was controlled by the leopards, but but uh, I don't know what he called. I, maybe he does foot. All right, a simple play to get us started, but one that points to a couple of things about the beginning of the game. What do you have on this play? Legal play, ruling correct. Make your ruling in the comments below. What do you have? Legal, illegal, why, etc. Put it in the comments below, and of course, stick around to the end of the show because we will review play number one for sure. And with that, let's move on now to play number two. Thanks for joining us today, though, on Five Play Friday. This is the show where we try to get better as basketball officials by analyzing all of the things. And that's what we're going to do on this play, right? We have a, a, a potentially a hard foul in the backcourt, legal or not, coach, disagreement, language, physical contact. What do we have on this play? Let's look at all of the things. So first of all, what do we have? We have a screening action in the backcourt. Three-person game, hard foul, player goes to the floor, etc. Coach, language, approaches the official on the court and bumps the official. What is our, how are we going to deal with this situation, right? This is <clears throat> very straightforward in my mind. This is like sudden, all of, you know, we have something, I did not expect that, but we have this action by the coach, Right. One of the things of, that we appreciate about the NBA and something we could take from it is that there are certain actions that make that are very simple. They the ruling becomes obvious when a coach takes this action. First of all, the verbal uh, assault and stepping onto the court already rises to the level of a technical foul. But this is an intentional contact by the coach on the court. This is a flagrant action and should immediately result in ejection of the coach. Now, it can catch us by surprise. We didn't expect that, right, et cetera. Our calling official here has great demeanor, right, in that they are, uh, they, that this is not a big emotional reaction to this. They're processing what they have. We can maybe take away the stepping towards the coach in an inflammatory situation. If we stepped away and simply said, tech, gone, right? That would be a great way to handle this situation. This action is unacceptable. It's simply unacceptable. And a coach cannot come onto the court and bump an official in this fashion. And if we just say, look, it's a simple, it's a simple guideline, right? 
If this action occurs, that coach is gone, right? It's it's simple. I don't have to think this through. You have taken an action that is flagrant in its nature and will be penalized accordingly. So we can look at the play on its merits. The screen itself, was this a legal screen, illegal screen? We could, Of course, we're looking at all the things. Player sets up. Let's let's look. They make a they make a movement from here. Let's see. Have they given a moving opponent time and distance in this situation? That's a judgment call. One or two steps. This player is moving fairly rapidly. This is potentially close, right? In 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 whether it's a, a bad screen or not. I say it's a legal screen. Right, but our coach feels my player is displaced. They are on the floor. That's a hard foul. You, you know, you've got a call, etc. You can disagree with the call all you want. You cannot uh, throw verbal assault on the on the official. You cannot step onto the court and express your disagreement. You cannot bump the official in this fashion. <clears throat> to me, this is a really straightforward scenario. One that when we see it <clears throat> in somebody else's game can help us prepare for when it could potentially occur in our game. If we just think this this is a simple line that has been crossed and will be penalized accordingly. I don't have to I don't have to mull it through. I don't have to do a lot of processing. This is a flagrant act and is unacceptable in the game. All right, a lot of stuff from that play that we can take with us so that when potentially something similar occurs in our game, we are prepared. That's one of the reasons why we have this show, Five Play Friday. And without delay, let's move on to our next play. All right, we have it. Uh, end of game situation. Team, white team is down by five. They are out of timeouts. We prefaced this uh, play scenario from my game um, on Basketball Rules Expert. In this end of game situation, the white team is out of timeouts. The ball passes through the goal with seven seconds remaining. The clock is running. When do we begin a count in this situation? What are the what are the what are the variables on this play? We end up with an unsatisfying end to our game. Everybody's confused. Why don't you stop, etc. A coach hadn't beaten their opponent in 15 years. Was super excited about this game. Has some parting comments for the crew. You know we don't put a bow on it, but let's look at all of the things on this play. unsatisfactory ending let's see what we have first of all we have a spin move this is a travel <laughs> ball passes through the goal has yet to hit the floor it's six point has it hit the floor right there's 6.3 the ball has bounced once when does the official begin their account? We have a player in proximity with the basketball. Makes no effort. Count begins, right? They do not have to have the ball in their possession. Time is allowed for an opponent to realize they are to throw the ball in, have the ball at their disposal before the count begins. 
Player makes no effort. The count begins. The clock is under five. Time expires. Frustration by the losing team. No illegal action taken by the, the losing team in this situation. But unsatisfactory ending in our game. Did our officials handle this correctly? Despite that, Ball passes through, has yet to hit the floor, 6.8. The coach sees 7.0 on the clock. Official gives the player a moment, begins a count, but we're under five seconds. They are under no obligation to pick the ball up. They are under no obligation to throw the ball in. And the game ends and the crew leaves, right? So it's a little frustrating that we can't put a bow on it in this situation, but this is the correct administration. The ball goes through the basket. The official needs to make a judgment about when the ball is at the disposal of the thrower and give them ample time to recognize that opportunity. Obviously, in this situation, they had no intention of picking the ball up, but the official makes a judgment, and at that point, they are to begin their five-second count, even if it's less than five, and if, if we t see an action by an opponent in this situation, like batting of the ball, trying to get a violation, etc. We are to ignore that action. None of that was taken on this play. But these end of game situations where, where obviously the, the game is compressed, we need to be at our best. This was correctly handled by this crew. After the game, no opportunity to really... Uh, provide information, right? It was a, a brief uh, comment made to the, uh, to the uh, coach by the lead official, and our crew is out of there. That's what we did on that play. All right, a play situation which we definitely have rules support to handle our adjudication of this play. It's great to have support, and one thing we have at this uh, channel is tremendous support from our show supporters. Who is up on the big board today? Brad Thompson, Luis Torres, Eric Eichacker, Mark Fisher, and Kurt Johnson. Much appreciated and much love. If you want to support the show, there's a link. It's in the show note. And yes, without fail, I will put one up above. Tremendous. Let's move on to our next play. All right, a block charge play from a collegiate game. Let's look at all of the things. One of the things when we analyze game video, we're saying mistake, 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 could improve, could improve. But when we also when we analyze game video, it's like, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. Great you know, hustle by our crew in this position. Let's look at all of the things here. This is a great play to just analyze the crew mechanics habits, fundamentals on the play. So we have a three-point attempt or a three an attempt near the three-point line and our trail official who ha has the play is indicating that the player was on the line. This is a, uh, an unapproved mechanic at the high school level. It's one that I employ personally. It's one that avoids confusion, right? And anything we can do to avoid confusion in our game is fantastic, right? So we see in this situation, our official is, you know, pointing to the spot and indicating, right? Now we have a try that goes up. In a transition situation, we have to make a determination. Now, the, the, we do not have possession by the white team 
But we see that this is a non-competitive rebounding situation. And that's our indication that, okay, we, you know, we can assume that White will get the ball here. We don't have to linger and wait for it, especially when we have energy going the other direction. Right, so now our new lead, right? You're in the new lead situation. You know exactly what kind of energy you need to expend in this situation. But we also see our center official is, at, you know, excellent hustle as well on this play. This becomes a who is officiating what scenario. We have two defenders. Who is officiating what? Analyze this in your own game in situations like this. If you are the center official, what are you officiating here? Our lead gets there, makes a ruling, strength at the spot, right? Our other officials are aware what's going on here. Come on. There's no white players coming in. It's not a hostile situation, etc. right? Our center official comes in towards the play. We like to say at minimum three-point line in a situation like this, in a closing down after a foul situation. Our, our new lead official is not scurrying. They are moving in, in a way that they can are open to players, etc. moving at an appropriate pace to get to be in position for the administra administrating the free throws, right? So oftentimes we see new younger officials in this situation. Your partner calls a foul and they race to the basketball. They have their head down, etc. Right, so when we look at habits and fundamentals on this play, we're connected. We've got to go, got to go. Center, new lead, have got to go pick up the defender, right? Do we have an open look on this play right here? I'd say yes. What is our center official officiating? Does he see the arc in collegiate? Do we have the feet? But we also have this secondary defender here. Right? What if the secondary defender has contact up top and the player is able to slip? The defender, the, pre, the other defender, right? our center official would need to get that. Our trail official could have an opinion uh, if they busted as well in this situation. A block is ruled at the spot. No hurry. No hurry right at the spot of the foul. This is a great habit and fundamental. And now we're going to go report. Our partners are in position to observe players. There's no tension on this play. But um, in the end, we have great habits and fundamentals, things that, I, you know, I want to move with the pace displayed by the lead official in this situation. I want to stay connected as the center official in this situation. I want to, after the foul, have the habits and fundamentals of the crew in this situation. I want those to bring those to my game, right? And so this is a great clip to analyze all of the things because analyzing all of the things is what we do. Now, this play was submitted by frequent play submitter Chris Janish. Much appreciated for the high quality video, Chris. If you have a play to submit, There'll be a link down in the show notes and maybe your play will make it to five play Friday. Habits and fundamentals that we can take with us are critical, right? We can recognize them when we do things excellently. We can recognize it when others do it excellently and bring, try to adopt those habits and fundamentals for ourselves in our own game. There's so much value in analyzing game video, and that's why we have the show. So let's move on to play number five.
right. Illegal screen ruled. A great play to look at. Love this play. Right. Our trail official on ball. Play goes away. Play, the official steps down. Excellent habits. A rotation, no. Official stays with his on ball matchup. Picks up the additional screening action. Rules. Team control foul. No shot. Let's look at all of the things. Wow. So first of all, let's judge the legality of the screening action on this play. We do have screening action here. A little extension, a little arm push, and then we have a moving opponent. Screener steps in, contacts the opponent. The shot is waved off. Has the ball become dead on this foul? Let's look at all the things. Pretty good crowd, eh, sort of. Good energy in the building. Right, so we have this screening action here. Right, we have an extension of the arm, a lean, no call on this play, on this screening action here. Three-point shooter. Our player in white is illegally contacted. Let's go back. Right, so our defender here is a moving opponent. When we're screening a moving opponent, we must give time and distance. There is illegal contact on that screen. Does this try get released before the contact? If it was, this would not be a team control foul, and the result of the try would count. Does that happen? That's something we have to be aware of on this play. Let's take a look. Boy, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. But I believe that this is the correct ruling on this play, that the contact occurs prior to the release. Yes, right? Ball's in the hand. That's something we'd want to have on this play. If, if the try, if, if you were um, the off-ball official in this instance and you knew the try was released prior to the contact, right, that goal will count, and we're going to have to come to that official in that situation, right? Right, our Official is processing, 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 and makes a ruling, right? This is a play that involves some processing. We have illegal contact. We are going to wipe the play. Yeah, so that's a good play, a good play to look at. Not something you see every every day. <laughs> Was... Was our was our was our defender? Uh, what were they going to do from there? All they were going to do is was uh, was foul the shooter the way they were running at them. Interesting uh, <laughs> that the <laughs> the illegal screen sort of saved them in this instance. But a great play to look at. We love looking at plays. That's why we do Five Play Friday. Analyze your own game video as that is the best way to get better rapidly as a basketball official. All right, start the show. We had a You Make the Call play. Let's review play number one. And it looks like for Arkadelphia, uh, number five, Max Halek's entry. And we are just about ready to get underway. Jump control boss. Oh. Well, I guess... It would look like it was controlled by the leopards, but but uh, I don't know what he called. It. Maybe it was foot. All right, a pretty straightforward situation. We are assuming that a jump ball violation had been ruled because everybody knows that a jumper cannot catch the basketball. Everybody knows that, right? We've got a player who catches the basketball on the floor. Were they on the floor? <laughs> Uh, do we have a traveling violation here? 
right? Do we have a, a, you know, our, when we have a jump ball violation ruled, of course, our crew, our mechanics, we are confused. Which way are we going? Who's going to have the throw in, et cetera? Our calling official does a good job of saying, I'll take the throw in and we move forward. But is this a jump ball violation by rule? No, no, it is not, right? When knowing what the restrictions are on players during a jump ball, we have to know that, but we also have to know when a jump ball ends. Jump ball is one of the three restarts in the game of basketball. During a restart in the game of basketball, jump ball, free throw, throw in, there are special rules and restrictions that are brought into the game during those events, those rules and restrictions apply. When the event, the restart ends, those rules no longer apply, right? So if our ruling on this play is a jump ball violation, it would be incorrect because when does a jump ball end? A jump ball ends when it touches the floor. Another player, non-jumper, the basket or backboard or one of the officials, right? So when this ball contacted a teammate and the teammate bounced off of them, our used-to-be thrower caught the basketball. Let's take a look. Toss. Good toss, right? When the ball hit the floor, the th jump ball had ended. All restrictions had ended. So if you had incorrect ruling or not a jump ball violation on this play, were you correct? Yes. Yes. Yes, you were. It's go time. What the heck? There's our elite tech team inserting themselves into the game like they always tend to do. Right? Another aspect of this play is, let's say you are a young official. Right? You are on this game and your partner rules a jump ball violation. Brings up two questions. One, are you going to express the fact that this is not a violation to your partner? Right? Are you ready to officiate the game from the opening tip? Are you actually ready? Do you recognize this situation? Do you recognize this is a misapplication of the rule? Do we come in with information and say, partner, right? Your veteran partner has this ruling. What language would you use? How about, how would you go about doing it, et cetera? These are the challenges we face. Come on, it's just the start of the game, right? Let's just roll with it. Um, my, my partner knows the rules much better than I do, et cetera, right? Uh, jump ball had ended, right? We come in and just say, hey, partner, jump ball had ended. The jump ball had ended when it hit the floor, right? We give our partner a moment. That's a legal play, right? What language could we use to communicate? Has our partner given us license, our veteran partner given us license in this situation to come and get the play correct, right? If you are the veteran partner in this instance, have you given your crew your young partner, license to come if they have something on a play, even if it's right in front of me, right? Come if you think we are doing something incorrectly, right? A couple of great points to recognize. Are we ready to officiate? Will we make those communications? Something we can ask ourselves in this situation so that when a similar play happens in our game, we're better able and prepared to get it right. Well, we've had five plays, so uh, it's been a great show and thank... What? A, a bonus play? We love bonus plays. Let's go.
Well, that's a fine how do you do. Usually on a bonus play, we have a palate cleanser, something fun. This is not fun. What do we have in this scenario, right? What's great about this play is it gives us the opportunity to make judgments about a fighting situation without all the chaos that often approach, you know, occurs in a fighting situation, right? Often there's like uh, other players coming in, players off the bench, people out of the stands, etc. But it's nice and clean in this scenario. So let's look at all of the things and how we would administer the penalties in this situation, right? Okay, let's start with the play. Action between those two players, shove, punch, step towards, etc. Wow, right? Our officials come in. What are the habits and fundamentals of the officiating crew in this scenario? We are clearly in second half action. Clearly, there is some energy between these teams. We are not happy with one another, and we have an obvious punch. And yeah, that's for you by our offending player. Let's look at all the things here. Player turns. Right, This hold is obviously a foul. This would be live ball contact. There seems to be a stoppage of play, so let's assume that a whistle was blown and subsequent contact is all dead ball contact, right? So we have a, a holding foul here. Five would be due the penalty related to that foul, either a throw-in or bonus free throws. After the foul, boom, a little elbow to the midsection, right? What kind of foul would that be? That is dead ball contact. That is a either intentional technical foul or flagrant technical foul. Both would be on the table for an intentional elbow to the midsection in this scenario. Teammate of the offended player shoves. Offended player punches. Teammate of the offended player steps towards, right? Wow. Okay. How are we going to do this? First of all, right? Our officials, what do we need to do in this situation? Rule number one, what do we need to do in this situation? Before we go report anything, we have to sort some things out. This is not going to be simple. Okay, I'm just going to go report and we're going to take care of this action. So step number one, recognize what we have. We have a complex layered play situation. We need information from all of the officials here so that we can properly adjudicate the situation. Right? Step number one, both of these teams need to go to their benches. Right? We have a discussion that we need to have. Send your players to the benches. Get together. What do we have on this play? Live ball foul. Dead ball contact. Fighting action right? Two dead ball contacts and fighting action. What level of technical fouls will be assessed in this situation? We're going to have to sort all that out. How will the game resume, right? We have a foul. We have a dead ball technical. We have a push. We have a punch. How will the game be resumed? This is a tough, tough situation for us to get correct. But one of the things about the situation is we have clarity of exactly what the sequence of events is. We have a messy situation. Here is my thinking on this play. We have a live ball foul by white by blue 20. We're going to penalize that. We have an elbow thrown by white five and a retaliatory action by blue 20. Obvious fighting action. In my judgment, those two go together. The flagrant elbow and the retaliatory punch both rise to the level of fighting in this situation, right? The, the white player elbows and goes away. They didn't elbow and turn around like, let's fight. But the corresponding action, the punch thrown by the offended player, to me, makes this rise to the level of fighting 
by for both players. Both players will obviously be disqualified from the game. In addition, we have a push, an intentional dead ball contact push by Blue 4. That will have to be penalized as well. So, in order of occurrence, we have the foul, the original foul, and that would result in potentially bonus free throws this late in the game. I assume this game would would be at that level. That's an assumption on my part. Let's assume that. The substitute for White 5 would be due merited free throws. The fighting fouls, fighting technicals would offset. We have a dead ball push by Blue 4. White would be awarded two technical foul free throws and the ball for a division line throw in opposite the table. If there were no bonus free throws related to the first foul, that would just be out of the equation as well. So a messy situation, but one that really allows us to think through how we're going to adjudicate this situation. In my opinion, the uh, the flagrant action to the elbow to the midsection by the uh, player who was fouled, white five, and the retaliatory action by the offended player of throwing an obvious punch makes that makes both players' fouls rise to the level of fighting. I don't, in my judgment, have fighting by blue four, even though there was a push and a step towards and then a conciliatory step between. It's a tough play to adjudicate by rule. It's great to see it with clarity in this situation so that we can think through how we are going to make judgments about plays like this. This is a play that offers us a lot of value. And one that it's great to see here so that when it, when it occurs in our games. But number one takeaway is when something like this happens in your game, it is layered. There are multiple things we have to sort through. Who did what? What are the, are, are the corresponding penalties? Great. How are we going to resume the game? Is this going to be a brief discussion? No. We have tension between the teams. Number one priority here. Number one, get the teams to their benches and do not allow them to leave their benches during our lengthy discussion, right? We're going to have a lengthy discussion. What do you have? What is the correct adjudication? How are we going to proceed and resume the game, right? So that's the number one takeaway from the play. A great play to look at and one that we really appreciate being sent to us. If you have a play, of course, there'll be a link down in the show notes below. Submit your play to Five Play Friday so that we can all get better as basketball officials. Well, normally we like to end the show with a palate cleansing bonus play. That was not a palate cleanser. That was, there's a lot to learn from that play. A great play. Um, put your ruling. What do you have down below? Um, how, would you, how would you adjudicate this play? Do you agree with me that the action of the elbow to the midsection rises to the level of fighting and both of those players are disqualified? Put your ruling down in the comments below. But let's not leave on that note. Let's look at another bonus play.
All right. So White with a big lead player, probably at the end of the bench, a 30-30 player. He only gets in when they're ahead by 30 or with 30 seconds left. Hits a long distance three. These are my assumptions about the play. Long distance three. Their teammates go crazy. They uh, run out onto the court. How do we adjudicate a play uh, such as this? Right? What is the penalty in this situation? Are any, is anybody ejected? What do we have here? Right. So, first of all, we love it. We love it when players uh, that are the team favorite players get in the game and do something fantastic and their teammates get excited. Whether these players thought there was going to be a timeout or what have you, but many players leave the bench um, and they are celebrating this moment with their player. People out of the stands, our game is delayed, etc. What is the penalty here, right? We have multiple players leaving the bench area, right? But it's not during a fight scenario, so there's no disqualifications. We have the, the same action by multiple bench personnel. This rises to the level of a technical foul. It is a bench technical. It is an indirect on the head coach. But nothing more than that. Nothing more than that. Two free throws to the opponent and the ball at the division line opposite the table. Straightforward. We like straightforward. Not so much thinking on this play. Hey, thanks for joining us today for Five Play Friday. You know the deal. We need you to hit the like button, the subscribe and the notify button so you don't miss out on any of our new content. Join us for our live streams. We go live every Wednesday and Friday during the basketball season. And do allow me a moment to thank our tremendous show supporters who help fuel our broadcast. On the supporter big board today, Brad Thompson, Luis Torres, Eric Eichacker, Mark Fisher, and Kurt Johnson. Much appreciated and much love. If you want to support the show, there will be one. Of course there will be one. A link in the show notes below. And I will without question put a link above. Awesome. We've got additional video content available for you. I have made a choice here for fighting in your game. A recent 5 Play Friday. Here's another great video for you to watch. Make a choice. Choose wisely. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care.